Christians use don't judge when they don't like conviction. Many of those who are truly born again, who have believed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and have repented of their sins, many of them do not like it when conviction comes. And the reality is, is all of us don't like conviction. But if we learn to like it, if we learn to love it, if we learn to see that conviction is a blessing, it's, it's the means by which God has sent his Holy Spirit to live in us and convict us of sin and righteousness and judgment, God's conviction is meant for our good because if we didn't have conviction, we would indulge in sin and all sins have consequences. And if we are living in sin, we're going to continue to live in a life that has not only temporal consequences, but eternal consequences insofar as it can reach to damnation for those who are not saved and covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. But many Christians use don't judge when they don't like conviction. And many self-proclaimed Christians use don't judge when they don't like conviction. Because the reality is, is God's word is inerrant. The teachings of the Bible are exactly what they are meant to say and to teach. And we cannot uh, destroy or dismantle what God's word says. People have tried time and time again, and they have perverted God's word, but from the aspect of actually changing God's word, God's word still has uh, stood the test of time and its truths still mean exactly what they say. And so, obviously, as we know from James, we are not to judge anyone because we are not the ultimate lawgiver. We are not the ultimate judge, and therefore, we shouldn't judge anyone. But at the same time, we see in Corinthians where Paul begins to speak and he says, it's not those outside the church whom I am to judge, but is it not those inside the church who I am to judge? And when we judge, we need to judge people appropriately, which is done based upon God's word. We don't need to judge the world. The world's going to continue to decline with its morality. It's going to continue to go downhill and sink deeper into the depths of hell and more of the manifestations of hell and the distortions and perversions of hell and Lucifer are going to be much more prevalent as the years and decades and centuries go on. Uh, but it is uh, proper judgment It happens when we utilize the word of God and we uh, judge based upon what the word of God says to those who are claiming to be Christians. And that is why um, discernment is judging a person based upon God's word. Being judgmental, however, is uh, comparing the person to oneself. When we say, oh, that person's doing that, I don't do that. Like, how can they call themselves a Christian? That is being judgmental. But when we say, okay, this person's claiming to be a Christian, but at the same time, they're living in habitual states of sin. They're living uh, with another person whom, we, whom they call a partner, but they're not actually married. They're just testing things out. Is that truly what the Word of God says is okay? Uh, you know, there are people who support abortion uh, and are for aborting babies, uh, but God's Word says clearly that is uh, not at all biblical. So is, is this person really a Christian? True discernment is through and proper, true proper judgment is done by utilizing God's Word and, and comparing the person, filtering the person through God's word. And that's exactly what Paul means. And so those who say, oh, you can't judge me, only God can judge me. Many of those who utilize that slogan and utilize that phrase are those who are living in habitual states of sin, unconvicted. They are living lifestyles of hidden sin where they are hiding it from other people. And they, they say, don't judge me because they themselves know uh, either they know or they don't know that they are living in sin. And so therefore, they don't want to be judged from it because they want to be able to you know, have one foot in heaven and one foot in hell. They want to be able to have all the blessings and wonderful promises and gifts of God without laying down their sin and being repentant of it. We know, I, I say this again and again, that the Christian life is not about perfection, it's about progression. But the reality is, is, a true conversion leads to change. We should see after a time frame has gone by that we no longer are living in certain sins. We may have struggles, we may have stumbles, 
but we shouldn't seek to be living in sin and trying to find people to itch our ears and to give us false doctrines with false sense of security that we can live in this and that everything is fine. And so that is why we need to make sure that we are discerning. If someone says, don't judge, we need to uh, assess the situation. We need to assess, okay, have I come from it from a bad point of view to where I'm being judgmental and saying, you're not doing what I am? Um, because that's wrong. But if we are saying, look, this is what the word of God says, you're claiming to be a Christian. However, you're living in this and you're not convicted with it and it's in a habitual state. Uh, do you truly believe the God of the word? Uh, because the reality is if we believe Jesus, we're going to believe in his call for us to be godly, righteous, and holy. If we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we believe in the triune God. We need to believe that, that God is filled with three persons, the Heavenly Father, the Holy Spirit, and the Lord Jesus Christ. If we are going to believe in Jesus Christ and believe that we are Christians, then our Christianity, we need to know and come to understand that it is based upon this word. If we didn't have this word, it would all just be willy-nilly. It would be a spiritual experience, an emotional drive to where we would do what it is we think is right. But we know the heart is deceitful above all things. Who can understand it? It is the Lord God Almighty who discerns the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And so we need to come to a consensus that when someone says, don't judge, we need to first assess how we approach this person. It always needs to be done in love, but eventually we need to have difficult conversations and tell them, look, I'm not to judge anyone of the world, but it's those in the church. And if I am seeing something that is contrary to God's word time and time again, you're thinking it's okay. I'd like to have a discussion with you to see if you truly believe the word of God and the God of the word. Because if you believe in Jesus Christ, you have to believe his words and his word is found in the Holy Scriptures. So may we allow conviction to set in when we have conviction. May we not become immediately defensive or anything, but may we assess, is this, uh, is this truly conviction? And if it is, it is from God and it is meant to turn us away from that which is not of him and turn us towards the path which is filled with life and truth and love.